Oh, while I am escaping with E.T. G'day and welcome to the show. Well, this week we've brought the Quintrex Yellowfin up here north of Cooktown, out on the Ribbon Reefs. And Wayno and Rob have joined me for this spectacular trip. Have a look at this beautiful cod just caught on a stick bait. Anyway, loads of action on the show. Check her out. It's an epic adventure of road trips, reef fishing... Nice, big trout. Whoa! <laughs> ..and big game from a small oh. boat. There's trolling for Trevally and tuna... To Mac tuna. Yeah. Hard-hitting popper action... Yes, well done. ..with That's colourful cool. results. Oh, here we go. There's mackerel... There we go. ..and oh, barra, and most epic of all, black marlin. Almost 3,000 kilometres is a road trip that takes many days and nights. But that's what it takes to get to Cooktown. And my Mazda BT-50 has handled it magnificently, towing my 6.7 metre Quintrex Yellowfin without a problem all the way. We've come through dozens of country towns and hundreds of kilometres of spectacular country. One of my most epic drives ever. Well, we got into Cooktown last night after a 2,750 kilometre drive from my hometown in Sydney. As you can see behind me, the beautiful Endeavour River. It's a magical place, Cooktown, and it's the home of the big fishing fleet that go out to chase giant black marlin. And that's where we're going to be heading this afternoon, out to Lizard Island for five days of black marlin fishing. Well, weather dependent. If the weather's no good, we'll go chase some of those other beautiful species, like those lovely reds, coral trouts, and, of course, the giant trevally. Anyway, time to get amongst them. Our first day goal is Lizard Island, where we'll stay every night. And on our way, we won't waste trolling grounds like this. Oh, here we go. Oh, right. That's a good run. Must be a... Must be a spanny yard, I think. Some sort of uh, mackerel. First fish for the boat, though. Oh, here we go. Look at that. He's absolutely pounced on the blue water. Look at that for a fish. Beautiful, hey? He's not a monster, but a perfect size. Now, that fish could be bait for a big marlin. And look at the size of it. It's an absolute cracking fish. But imagine putting a big hook out the front of that, towing him along, and then getting eaten by a massive, big female black marlin. It's a beauty. And that nice length of wire. And we often put wire on, on the lures up here simply because mackerel have got razor-sharp teeth. And on your balls here. <laughs> Beautiful, yep, got that. That's a nice looking fish. Look at the teeth on him. Yeah. Savage as, aren't they? Super sharp teeth. You've got to be extremely careful with one of these guys. As you can see, beautiful looking fish. And that blue water lure has just hit the target mark right in the mouth. Those Gamakatsu hooks are super sharp too. With fishing this good to be had, we continue to troll while we travel. Well, this blue water classic come up trumps again. I'm pretty sure it's a tuna, a small tuna, just the way it shakes its head violently. Uh, it's done a little bit of a run. The perfect time, that late afternoon. There just seems to be the predators are out. The, they push that bait right up to the surface and the, the bait's got nowhere else to go. So uh, it's a real easy pickings for the, for the predators underneath. But just a small tuna, this one. And we'll have a close-up look any second. Oh, can you believe it? This is the trevally. So that's what's working underneath those birds. When we come up to them, we weren't quite sure whether there was going to be tuna. I never thought trevally, but uh, obviously they're feeding out here in big numbers as well. There we go. And you can see how far he's engulfed that lure. He's absolutely gobbled that down. Not much good to eat. You can have them raw, but uh, basically, we get these guys back in the water nice and quickly. But with the sun going down fast in the west, it's now time for us to finish one last troll and put the throttle forward for the final run to our island base. We're not at Lizard Island yet. We've got another 45 kilometres to go. Loads of quality gear on this boat to ensure that we get there safely, thanks to our beautiful Garmin electronics. And of course, we've got our GPS so we know exactly where Lizard Island is. And talking about safety, 
I've got the uh, the life jacket on. You never know out here. Anything could go wrong. But we're trying to take all precautions and make sure safety comes first. Well, here's a great lure for you. The classic Blue Water 160. It's built in two diving depths, down to three metres and five metres. And the 160 is ideal for casting or trolling for a whole range of different species, like coral trout, Spanish mackerel, trevally, kingfish, tailor, salmon, bonito, the list goes on. Designed for hardcore blue water trolling, it's fitted with a one-piece through wire frame for integrity. It can be trolled at two to 10 knots and is super tough. The classic blue water has been built for pros and amateurs alike. So make sure you get one, two or three of these in your tackle box. It's day two of our epic far north Queensland road, reef and game fishing trip. We leave our overnight camp on Lizard Island with the yellowfin well prepared. A game chair and big game rods dominate the fishing deck, but it's not yet time to load up those outriggers and go chasing a big marlin. First, our skipper Rob has other ideas. Because right now the currents are good for fishing these mighty reef drop-offs. Well, I thought it was a, a small GT, but it looks to be a reefy of some sort. Oh, yeah, nice, big trout. Huge coral trout. Absolute stonker here. Whoa! <laughs> That's a big coral trout. Hey, what about that for a coral trout? <laughs> oh, that's a thumper, and he's eating one of these Shimano stick baits. Actually, uh, you swim them across the top, they lower the rod down a little bit, and it'll dive deeper. Trout are a fantastic fish, but once they get to this size, uh, they've got a real tendency to have cigatera and you don't want cigatera poisoning. Very interesting thing, but this guy's going back in, even though he's such a beautiful fish. <laughs> yeah, don't get much better than that. Well, let's see how much better we get with another trolling run along this beautiful stretch of reef. And before long, my crewmate Wayne shows us with a great catch on one of his own lures. Oh, nice colour down there. Yeah, it's definitely got silver on it. A it's big barracuda. Oh, <laughs> my look God. Look at the size of him. Hey, that's what those scurvy dogs can catch. Hey, that's what they can catch. There we go. Big smelly barracuda. Look at the teeth on him. Oh, those teeth are huge. Now let's see if we can do even better with a switch from trolling to surface popping. A style of fishing where the more you can see, the more you're likely to get. Really important to wear polarized sunnies like tonic out there on the water. I'm going to see just reef system after reef, reef system. You can just pop a all day out here. And it's not just about better fishing. The risk of eye damage from the glare off the water makes my tonics a safety essential right up there with wearing a life jacket. <laughs> oh, that's a mega fish. <laughs> this is what fishing's like out on the barrier reef. Quite incredible. <laughs> and what you've got to be looking for uh, are the pressure points, where the current's actually hitting the reef, on what point, what corner. All right. Oh, it might be a trevally. Yeah, just a little, a little trevor. Yep. Scoot him in on this heavy gear. Wow, oh, yeah, all right. Hopefully he's the littlest one we catch. There he is there, not a big giant trevally. Let's slip that hook out. OK, there we go. Oh, there we go. See you, buddy. And it's about to get better yet. Come on. Something's coming. Something's coming. Oh, everything's coming. Oh, there's fish everywhere. Oh, look at that trout. Oh, oh it's massive. Can Wayne and his scurvy dog get onto it? Yep, get him. He's back. Yep. A couple with him too. Well done, well done. That's a good one, eh? There were a couple there, weren't there? Bluefin, they're a beautiful fish. They are a gorgeous fish. You have a look at the colours on this fella. Oh, yes, well done. Is that your first one on the uh, lure of yours? 
Yeah, that's a beauty, mate. Good stuff. Look at the colours. Those colours right along the back there. Bluefin trevally. Real pretty fish. We'll put him back in the water. When the current starts pushing in, wouldn't mind starting to head out along the edge. Following the information we're getting from our Garmin and Rob's local knowledge of these waters, we make the move to another spot along the reef where a long cast could really come up with the goods. Nice and high out she goes. Boom, right in the middle. Where that white water is. There. Oh, big fish, big fish. Yes, got him. Oh. Oh, he's up on the surface. You can see the pressure. Oh. Like that is under enormous drag. So this fish has just, just realised he's hooked. He comes swimming out. He's quite a long fish. Just take us away from all the reef, mate. This fish has certainly not given up yet. So what I've got Rob to do is just move us out a little bit away from the reef. As you can see, the load of the rod. Come on, buddy. Did come up the top and just scoot along. What have we got there? What have we got? What is this? Big cod. Big codger. Look at the size of him. Wow. Hey? Eh? I know you're going to have to give me a hand here, mate. That's a nice big cod. That's your best, mate. Have you? You're yours, mate. And this is one mighty fish that I'm pleased to say it's going to go on living out here on the reef. Well, this is the, uh, the stick boat I'm using at the moment. It's a Shimano Orca. 200 pound trace. This is a wind on leader cut down, and Shimano make these. And a beautiful uh, T curve Shimano GT rod. One of the T curve range, Ian Miller. And down here to my uh, Stella 18,000 salt water. Some beautiful uh, braid on. Again, more Shimano. Shimano make such good products, I can't speak highly enough of them. Everything from uh, lures to line to rods, and some of the best reels. All right, let's get a cast out there. There she goes, wind's got up, block her over, boom, right on the money. All right, now you'll see a bit of splash. That'll be the lure coming back. There. Oh, big fish, big fish, yes, got him. We're based in far north Queensland on beautiful Lizard Island. And our Quintrex Yellowfin is beautifully set up for game fishing, with equipment including a relaxed game chair, unusual on such a small boat. But before we chase big marlin, we have to catch big bait. Quick, here we go. Oh, oh. Oh, I lost him. Serious? Yeah. Bugger. Oh, yeah, on again. Oh, you bugger. There must be a whole pack of them there. Oh, yeah, on. There we go. <laughs> oh, I lost one. And as I was winding back, another one hit. He missed. And then the third one, well, they say third, third time lucky, don't they? Nice fish, whatever he is. Oh, well, I think I might have uh, jagged him, actually. And that's why all the thrashing's going on out there. I don't think he's hooked cleanly. I think I've got him in the tail. He does look like a... Uh, scaly, I think. Yeah, scaly. He's okay. coming in backwards, though. You can see those hooks have just stuck right in there. How's he for size, Robbie? Put about a 700 pound leader. No, he's good. He's, he's a good he's size, awesome. eh? Yeah, no, he'll, be, he'll be awesome. We might gentle him down. He's been pulled in backwards, that blue water lure, straight through the tail. Here we go. Little torpedo. Perfect marlin bait. But no matter how perfect, one bait's never enough. She's 
coming up now. Oh, there he goes again, though. He's got a big tough. Yeah. Tuna, that's why. Oh, Long bait, tail. bait. He's a bait. Yeah, you like him? Yeah, mate, he's good. Actually, it's uh, not a long tail. It's a mac tuna. You can tell by those stripes across the back. I didn't see him there for a minute. All right, there we go. Beautiful. Good looking fish, aren't they? You see him in the sun. This is a nice little fish. For us, a great bait fish. Yeah, ripper. That's enough for us to get those outriggers deployed and get our teasers and baits rigged for the first marlin run of the trip. It's time to deploy the most important item on the big game angler's list of essentials, and that's patience. The patience to sit quietly watching your lines and the water, chilling out while staying just tense enough to be ready when it happens. And it always happens fast. Yeah, still wet. Got a very little fish here. It's uh, come up and hammered. Balls, one of ballsy flues, I think it is. It's only a little girl, little boy, actually. Gotta keep that tension on. Just keep it going forward a bit faster, mate. Yeah, a little bit faster. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Oh! It's a little one. Uh, yeah, let's have a look at this fish. We'll give it a tag, eh? Right, eh? There we go. Tag's in. That's good. Now, that is a little fish. Well, mate, definitely the right species, but what about the size? It was only about yay long, about 30 odd kilo. Oh, well. Yeah, it doesn't matter, it's a start. And this is just the start, as you'll see when we continue our epic reef and game fishing adventure next week. My road trip to Cooktown wasn't all long days at the wheel of the BT-50. Passing by the awe-inspiring land and seascapes of the Queensland coast, I took the opportunity to break the drive with a side trip 26 kilometres inland to the beauty of the Peter Faust Dam. Here I met up with my mate Koji, a keen kayak angler who had driven up with his Hobie tandem from Sunstate Hobie in Brisbane. Well, we're just doing some trolling at the moment. We're out in deep water, about 50 foot of water underneath us. And we're going to troll all up through this section, heading towards the wall in the hope of catching a big barra. There's three of us on board this time. Koji up the top. We've got Lani in the middle, and we're really hoping that uh, we can catch Lani a fish. So a nice big barra would be fabulous. Lani is no stranger to kayaking, but she's never even been close to a big barramundi before. So Koji's picked the perfect place to make the introduction. Peter Faust Dam is over four and a half thousand hectares of impoundment fishing heaven. And Lani is just about to discover why. And then wind, yeah, lift, and then wind down. Oh, hey. it's a horse. That's the biggie. Yeah, you're doing exactly right. Uh, that's the way. You just might have to, might have to go around, around here. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. And same again, just so wind up nice and tight. That's it, just keep it. Keep that bend there and that'll keep the hooks in. Look at that big fish. Okay. 
I reckon it's probably high 90s, you know? All right, big fella. There we go. Nice looking fish. <laughs> Very good. Well, Lani, you never thought you were going to catch a big barrel like this one, did you? No, I thought it would take longer. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? <laughs> now, this one we actually trolled up, which was pretty cool in this uh, beautiful 17T Hobie. And the three of us are on board. It's, uh, it's a bit of a... A bit of a weapon, isn't it? Yeah. It's an amazing, amazing vessel. Yep. Amazing. Oh, really wants to go, this fish. OK. Yep. I'll just send her your way. Come on, girl. Woof. <laughs> nice. Down she goes. Well done. Mm. All right, deserves another one. <laughs> cool stuff. But one was all that Lani got. Unlike me with my marlin further north. See you next week for the second and even bigger episode of my epic reef and game fishing adventure.